nobody does Star Wars like the power of the Force from Kenner. Hey, Star Wars fans, welcome back to another episode of Power of the Force Fridays. We're taking a look at Prince Shizor from the Shadows of the Empire sort of sub-EU line, part of the uh, big Shadows of the Empire sort of marketing thing from 1996. 1996 had everything except a movie. We had <clears throat> books, as you can see here, the novelization by Steve Perry. It's just a paperback version. We have the omnibus version of the comic books, which I'm very, very due for a, a read once again. But that's very cool. So I thought I'd just get them out. Just, just a couple of little background pieces to uh, to put there while we're talking about Prince Shizor himself, leader of the Black Sun, the crime syndicate. And what a what a strange, strange character he was. Still is, arguably. Um, yeah, obviously, accessories he comes with are these. Can't remember what they call them. It's like an energy shield sort of thing. And they do sort of separate. So you can use them to, you know, in each hand. And also sun himself during those hot summer Mustafa days. We do know that during the Clone Wars, you know, the canonical side of his species, the Feleen, they did take up residence on Mustafar for a time. That's when Darth Maul went and recruited them. And basically, Savajo Press, who I spoke about in my Clone Wars throwback yesterday, he beheaded all of them but one, <laughs> all of the leadership. And uh, suffice to say, they, they agreed to join... The Black Sun. But yeah, there was another version of this that came in a two-pack with Darth Vader. And he came with a staff. So he could fight Darth Vader with a staff. I don't think the figure was too different. It's a little like the sort of pattern of his sort of gown. It's sort of a little bit of a jigsaw. Very sort of geometric. It looks quite cool. But just the, the green skin, the purple. You know, you don't have to... You don't have to look twice about him being a bad guy. And I love that sort of spinal cord. Almost reptilian sort of spinal cord coming down the back of his head there. And his ponytail. He's still very much in the, in the realm of the power of the force with the... With the brutish... Brutish, extremely masculine builds. <laughs> I dare say he's rocking a, an incredible six-pack under there. These are dumbbells. You know, he definitely lifts. But loving the, loving the look of him, though. He's just... Look at that face. Let's so take these off just so I can... Uh, Focus a little better on the on the head there. There we go. Check that out. But yeah, the most recent release was one of the comic packs in I say 2010 perhaps. Might have even been earlier. We had sort of slightly more realistic stylization of Prince Shizor. You know, it wasn't so buff. And he came in a comic pack with with the layer. Here, which you know isn't isn't the greatest of figures, but they definitely uh, paid attention to some of the the details there on Leia, if you know what I mean. You can sort of see, yeah. But we're talking about she's all here. Um, yeah, I love the use of the the purple soft goods again. The sort of the spine ripping out the back. Well, it's not ripping, but obviously his clothes are sort of made to fit that form that he has. Maybe a little bit more of a creepy look. Tell you who'd be a good a good actor to play Prince She's or Hugo Weaving. There's something about the brow. There's things that Hugo Weaving can do with his eyes and his brow just to give it that sort of 
real sort of sly look. Fantastic actor. I don't think it's ever going to happen, mind you. But yeah, again, he comes with his staff. Little, little purple ribbon on the top. So yeah, you can sort of see the difference between the two. Yeah, I'd love to hear whether you have any memories of that era, that Shadows of the Empire era. I never got the uh, the vinyl soundtrack that was released a few years ago. They re-released the the vinyl soundtrack. I do have it on CD. I'm playing the uh, Nintendo 64 game, and like I said, the books. Very, very wild time for Star Wars. I was probably a little bit too young to really appreciate it. Um, in 96, 97, you know, I was probably 10, 9, 9 years old. But it was all about the games, the figures, good times were had. And these days we're, we're very, very spoilt for choice with what we've got in terms of TV series and book series and comics and animated shows and all sorts. But yeah, Shadows of the Empire being very, very rooted in the original trilogy, obviously coming at the end of Empire Strikes Back and into Return of the Jedi. Very, very interesting time. And yeah, something I definitely always want to revisit, but there's so much else to sort of try and keep up with at the same time, so... Thought this would be a cool one to take a look at. It's been been a while since I've done an EU special. So I do appreciate you taking your time out to take a look. I hope you've enjoyed it. Back again every Friday through April. And then Going to do be doing something a little bit different in May, as I've said in the last couple of weeks. A bit, fan, bit more Phantom Menace orientated, and then we'll get back to Power of the Force uh, at the uh, at the end of May. So appreciate your hanging out, sticking around, joining me every week. It's a good fun. We'll see you next time for another episode of Power of the Force Fridays. Until then, may the force be with you always. We would be honoured if you would join us.